Hello everyone, welcome to another Tri-C Anthropology video. I'm Eric here. Uh, today we're going to be doing a Minecraft archaeological survey in one of these four archaeological survey methods. Today's uh, archaeological method is going to be random archaeological sampling. Uh, so that's in the top right quadrant of the map that appears on your screen. I've already gone ahead and made the map and I've already placed the random test units. And so what we're going to be doing today is actually excavating those test units. So you can see there's at least one, two, three, four, four of them that are on the um, water and then there's only two of them that are on land. And so I don't know what we're going to run into when we start digging down. And as we do the digging, I'll explain how this compares to real life archaeology. All right, so the first thing I have to do is I actually have to calculate my my units in real life. So I made them on the map, but now I need to actually figure out how to find them in the game. So the first one that we're going to be doing is at East 14, North 10, which I got randomly. So actually, I recalled four things, silly me, in starting this process. One, the scale is not one to one. It's actually one block in my map is equal to 16 blocks in the game. So I have to go 224 blocks east of my datum here. Two, I forgot that you could actually look at your XY coordinate systems in the game by pulling up F3. Three, I should not be counting blocks on the ground floor. And four, I'm in creative mode. I don't need to count blocks without actually placing them. So I'm going to write down my datum right now. Y yeah, I'm facing north. So why are these numbers going down? Okay. So what else we have learned in Minecraft is that north, the numbers are going down. In archaeology, the southwest corner is always your datum because you're always moving positive in any direction because the datum is always so far southwest of you, you should always be in positive units. You should never have to do negative units, right? It's never east negative 10 meters, uh, north negative 15 because you always want to be in positive. You never have to deal with negatives or different cardinal directions. All right, so here's our first one. It's in the sea. Oh my gosh, this is just, this has been quite the undertaking. I thought this was going to be relatively straightforward because Minecraft is full of, uh, hello. Hello temple. Oh boy, now I got to survey this. Well, it's not my survey area, but I looked over and I found this, so I can't not include it in my in my archaeological map. I've got to got to include this. Ay, caramba. <laughs> and this is just one of them. I have Well, let's see. Let's do the math here. If there's 6 of them total, that means I have to do this 18 times plus the transects, which is just flying over a certain area. Boy, howdy, that's, that is very tedious. But luckily, this is something we can just put into post-production and just cut out all the boring parts. But unfortunately, in real archaeology, you can't cut out the boring parts. Not unless you want to skip the whole archaeology part. So... I haven't really thought about, in Minecraft's context, what constitutes the bottom of the cultural layer, um, because in Minecraft that could be all sorts of things. So in theory, we could run into cultural material up until the very bottom of the renderable area. So I feel like the equivalent of reaching the maximum depth in a real life survey would be the equivalent of reaching the bottom in Minecraft, but I don't know. That's a lot of digging. See, in a real archaeological site, 
we would only dig probably well in a underwater it's different but if we were above water on the surface like say in an upland context so you don't have rivers adding soil to your your area every year uh, when it floods you realistically most places the top meter you're gonna run into most of human history um, unless someone's dug down below that area particularly in North America yeah I know I also broke one of the cardinal rules in archaeology you're supposed to go down in one level layer um, but I I just forgot let's just be real here I should probably mark every we'll say every third block just as an arbitrary meter yeah now we got a nice little uh, arbitrary stratigraphy here so something else that I hadn't thought about so if we're gonna go down in layers we also need to keep in mind we should probably have some way of marking arbitrary layers that don't meet natural layers right so we can sort of see what's going on here there's a natural layer of gravel then a natural layer of um, cobblestone here and then we've got some looks like gravel or not gravel uh, dirt down there but what I'm just doing with the red wool is just using these to indicate arbitrary levels so if I found something say right here I'd know it's in the first level between one two three so zero and three blocks below the surface right something like this would probably be good for like a, I could use one of those uh, travel vlogger songs you know during a time lapse decided to use um, the reference of how deep buried treasure is and how likely it is that we're going to find shipwrecks uh, below a certain depth underwater. So I decided that I would do 20 uh, blocks below surface would be my cutoff. So yeah, there wasn't anything inside of this 16 uh, square squares, uh, I guess is the way you would, you would call it. Um, but we can at least say there's one positive to this first random sample in this quadrant and that is we found an underwater temple so what we're going to do is we're going to add this to our um, survey map so we'll treat these as artifacts and then we'll pinpoint where we found this um, and we'll map it in underneath this iceberg and we'll map in the full extent of this underwater um, temple or ruins whatever it's called so I think there's a couple of things that I misled people with at the beginning of this video one that it was gonna be a five-part series uh, based on how long it took me to um, dig all of this I don't think it's gonna be done in five parts since this was just one of six within just one of the quadrants I still have to do this 18 times um, total if you enjoyed this content um, and you found it educational then please consider donating to the Tri-C Foundation, which I'm linking in the description below. Uh, and also, uh, stay tuned for the subsequent number of videos. I don't know how many of these I'm going to be making. It just depends on, again, what we find, how long it takes me to dig down 20 blocks in each of the um, test units, uh, how long it takes me to make the spreadsheet to map everything in. Uh, but stay tuned nonetheless for however many are going to be in this multi-part series of Minecraft archaeological surveys. Uh, and as always, never stop learning.